All right. Well, Cal Topo will never replace a compass and a paper map. That's something you're always going to use. As you may know, I never use a cell phone on my outings for one reason. I don't like the, to have a phone with me all the time uh, when I have a, a canoe trip. I just want that physical contact. I want a little bit break uh, the real world to the outdoor world. Now, that's why I normally I use a, a Garmin, a GPS Garmin. Caltop uh, always helped me to do all the homework because we are tripping a lot of trips during the summer and fall. And I like to do all the homework in home, planning everything, all the campsites, all the rapid locations, all the emergency routes. It's really, it's Caltop, it's for me, it's a planner. It's very similar with the Google Earth. And most, what is the difference from Caltop and Google Earth? Well, it's almost the same, but Caltop, it's more powerful in maps. Unfortunately, Google Earth, it's free as well. Caltop is free as well, or, or you can pay. But Caltop, the big difference, they have a lot of extra information and they have extra tools as well, helps a little bit. I read the last workshop we did, I received a lot of emails asking if it's worth to have a subscription for Caltop. I will say if you do a lot of remote trips, for sure. I will say if you do a lot of Algonquin, the Magami, maybe not. Maybe you can keep so far, you can keep the Google Earth, you do the same. I like the call top because it's really good on the remote place. You have all this next information. Call top, I receive a lot of emails asking, well, call top show campsites, for example. No, call top is only show maps. Some maps can show some campsites as well, but in general, you don't buy you don't buy sub subscription, call top subscription for to know the location of rapids or campsites. For that stuff, you, I think you need to buy a paper map, for example, from Jeff's Maps or just buy books. It will never replace, unfortunately. Uh, I hope one day they're going to add all that stuff. Caltop is very strong in the US. It's much more strong in all the information based on the outdoor maps they have. Unfortunately, Canada, our Backcountry maps, they are not the best compared with the US or compared like in Europe. Uh, if you're going above Sudbury, above North, the maps, they are not uh, they are not updated like every year compared like other countries. Uh, but that's why I like call to put this always an extra information. Um, I, I really like Google Earth. The good thing when you have a call top, you can use a subscription. When you pay a minimum for the call top, it's $20 a year. You have access to a link, and that link you can use the, the call top maps in Google Earth. And that's a really cool uh, uh, access. When I'm, st I'm, when I'm going to start, start preparing a, a canoe trip, my biggest, always my biggest concern is the distance. And when you are in a river, almost there's no way to get lost because it's a river and you always go through everything. But I always like to know, it's my biggest concern, when is the rapids, if there's a fall or it's a waterfall, but most, my biggest concern is the distance every day we need to pile and make sure we are on time and we are following the schedule. That's, that's why I always like to work on Caltop or on Google Earth. Um, when, I'm, when I'm starting preparing a trip, I start right away with uh, the paper maps or start checking different websites. And for example, there's this really big website for, uh, from Quebec, really cool guys. And they have a lot of maps and I start right away checking the maps. Now, what's that called? A Cars Plein Air, it's French, and they have 
a lot of maps and campsites and it's free. The second option normally when I'm going, if I'm going to do a, a Quebec trip, looking in Quebec, I'm going to Quebec Federation. And they have a lot of, they have as well really cool maps. You can go, it's in French, but I, okay, I understand a little bit French. And they have a lot of locations. They have like a normal map. And mm -hmm. if you zoom in, in a map, you select an area. And you have an extra information. I'm just going to open a little bit. And there's some information about the river as well. It's in French, but you always can right click and translate to English and helps a little bit. Um, I always like to see as well YouTube videos. It's always helped to know the rapids or how the river is. Uh, sometimes I'm going as well to my CCR and I'm can, I can go for routes. Just to report, I don't know if you guys know, my CCR belongs to, to our club, to Wilderness Canoe Association. We support uh, my CCR, we own my CCR, and I think it's a very great tool for the Canadian paddling community. And there's a lot of information as well. And after I grab all the information, I start to figure out how many days I go. Uh, and then I jump to a little bit to Kaltopo. Well, let me show Kaltopo. When you open Kaltopo, just give you a moment. This is what it looks, Kaltopo. On the right side, you have the maps. On the left side, you have the objects and the layers. It needs to be very careful when you are saying Kaltopo provide maps. Kaltopo, they see a different way. Maps for Kaltopo, it's the wrong way. They only provide base layers. For us, maps, for Kaltopo, it's base layers. If you talk someone with Kaltopo, when you say which base layer they are using, it means it's a map. It's a topographic map. Uh, and Kaltopo only confirm you when it's a map, it's when you place objects on a base layer. For example, we have a topographic map from Canada. And when you place a waypoint or a track on top, Call top right away and say, okay, this is a map. Until you place an object, could be a track, a waypoint, or a line, they say it's only a base layer. All these maps, it's a base layers. It's not a map. When, sorry, just give a moment. When you place an object at a line, this is a map because you place an object. Um, just give a moment, okay. On the left, as I say, on the left side, you have the objects, all the information, how you're going to draw a map. And then you have all the, all the small maps you want to overlay. Uh, there's a there's your name. You can sign. You create a, a Google account or Yahoo account. Everything you want. They give you a password. Or you can pay twenty dollars uh, a year. Uh, I would say if you travel a lot uh, in the remote areas, if you're going to do snake mountain river, or if you're going really up north from Quebec, uh, yeah, for sure you need a call topo because the Google Earth is not enough. Uh, let me just pull this stuff. I'm a, today I'm going to show you a trip I'm trying to plan this summer. It's the Pontax River. This is the, it's in Quebec. It's, this area is the James Bay. And I'm going to explain how you get from, from, a zero map with nothing 
and how you get to this. I'm trying to, I'm going to explain since the beginning. Um, on the left, on the right side, you have a lot of information from Kaltopo. This is the base layers. As a reference, I'm going always to show the Pontax River. We can go any river. For example, you can go on the top, just write to Dumoin River. And Kalto push show right away the Dumoin River. That's a really cool tool. They are very precise. And you are showing one type of layer, base layer. Remember, for Kaltopo, only there is only you only make a map once you play an object on top. Or it could be a waypoint. That needs to be very clear because a lot of people get confused when you talk with the Kaltopo. And if you change for scanner tops, that's Canada Topo maps. And then you can start playing with Google Maps. For example, you have the Google layers and you have a Google Map layer. It doesn't show almost anything. Or you can go satellite maps from Google Earth on the same location. Or you can use then there's a different map suppliers. You just need to Google and check online. Sometimes they're like secret maps. There's another very famous company on this one in the world and the pictures, satellite pictures, they are really good. You almost, you can see the, the rapids. Um, what else? And then we have map. I see walls. the ice too. Yeah, you can see the ice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, even in US, you have a lot of information about the fire history. This is really good, the sun exposure. For example, if you are in a really, not in a flat surface, but if you are, and maybe I can show you my builder. Just give a moment. So that would be more like selecting campsites and exactly selecting a nice campsite. sunny spot and when the yeah. sun comes up and stuff like that. Exactly. Excellent. Yeah, this is really good to know where you want to camp. The more red it is, the more, for example, on the right side you see more red. It means in the morning, today is let's put on August at 9 a.m. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, and you have a because it's a very flat surface, but if you're going for a very mountain area, you see right away it's getting very dark areas. Let me see on snake. Snake, snake, we were. Yeah, you or, get the shadows from the big mountains. Exactly. Yeah. Or even for, I'm going, let me show this one. Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah. So the purple represents the shadows? Yes, it represents the shadows. Okay. At 12 o'clock, or that's, yeah, 12 o'clock Eastern. Okay. Yeah. Seven CGST, just give a moment. Yeah, this is really open area. Well, I think if you go like maybe when you're getting around, uh, see the problem with way up north, it's almost 24 hours a day sun, right? Yeah. But if you went around like eight o'clock in the evening, you're gonna get a lot of shadows, right? I would think, because the sun is dropping. Yeah, as you can see right away in the valley. Yeah. So now some of the river is, yeah. And that yeah, as you can see, you don't wanna camp on this 
purple area because you know it's going to be very cold and even in the morning, right? It's a really good tool. Another tool as well, it's for people, once, for example, going for ski. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Da, 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 da. Counter is my builder. It's an exposer. Share it up on maps. Uh, slope. Okay, we have the slope shading for people who's doing a lot of ski or backcountry ski. This is very, it's very cool because it's the slope as well, and you can see by colors. For example, we all know people is going to on the background. More than forty-five degrees, you are in avalanche area. I think it's forty-five. <laughs> if someone say no, just let me know. Just text me. I think it's forty-five. More than forty-five degrees, you know there's an avalanche area. It means maybe when you are doing Snake River, there's some areas because it's more than forty-five degrees. You know, okay, there's an avalanche area in a canoe trip or another backcountry trip is so maybe we should avoid that area and you can see all the colors i really i really like this tool as well um there's another interesting tool as well but i'm going to show in maybe in your sanity or sanity wow i think it's just so oh, sorry Okay, this is Yosemite Valley in, uh, in California, very famous for climbing. Um, you can go for maps, other maps. Give me a moment. Topographic, outdoors maps. Just give you a moment. I want to show you my building for its service. I'm just trying in shark maps. Where's that map? I know there is a map. I'm just trying to figure out where is that map. Your map, share maps. Sheets. Okay, share your sheets. Okay. Okay, when you are, for example, in Yosemite, unfortunately in, UK, in Canada, we don't have a lot, but for example, if you're going to visit uh, the rocks on Yosemite Valley, and there's the tourist maps, the, the flyers that meaning, you can go on Caltop and download, for example, this one. And this is really cool tool. Uh, there's a lot of, another one called the map. In the US, they have a lot of people. If, if someone is on this call, it's from US for sure. This is helps a lot because it's like tourist maps. And sometimes there's avalanche maps. Uh, there's a lot of maps. So and of course, it's orientated to the real orientation. Yeah, yeah. That's why that screen capture was on a 45 degree angle. Yes, yeah. it's really, okay. and you have access to all these maps uh, and you can download at the same time. Um, there's a lot of layers, as I said, on the, on the cutoff, that's why I, I like. Because if when you're going to a remote place, you have access to a lot of information. Google and Google Earth, you don't have access. Uh, but I want to start doing, for example, if you're going for a preparing a canoe trip, I want to start with you guys showing. I'm going as a reference for a Pontax River. It's in Quebec. And this is, I did a small sketch this week, just trying to show you guys. Mm -hmm. This is a starting point and you paddle for 146 kilometers and then you finish in this area. And as I said, Caltop, it's, it's really works as a planner. 
it doesn't replace a compass or a paper map. Unfortunately, you need to know when you're going to the wilderness, you need to know how to use a compass and a paper map. <clears throat> um, and I'm going to start from the beginning. Okay. Okay, the first thing you we know it's the starting point. The first thing I'm going to mark it's a it's a waypoint marker. Oh, sorry. The first thing I'm going to create it's a folder. The folder I'm going to create is going to call Pontax River, and you are on the left side is already showing a Pontax River. Let's delete these sheets. It doesn't belong to these maps from US. And then uh, my next step is create the first waypoint. I'm going to start where we start our trip. You can select the folder. I'm just going to move this bar to the top. Uh, and the folder. Sorry, oops, oops. Sorry, I did a mistake. First thing folder, contacts, river, it's already there. Okay. Okay. Marker, folder, contacts, river. And then I'm going to call this waypoint starting point, start. It's where you start our trip. You can place any icon. There's a lot of options. I'm going to start. And you can change the color if you want. And OK, that will be our starting point. This looks like a bridge. I'm going to change for scan at tops. And then maybe, OK, now I know it's a bridge. Maybe I'll, I want to see Google Maps, our looks. It looks, so we already have one, a rapid. Now I'm changing for another aerial view. And then, oh, now it's much better. Okay, I can see a house and then I'm going to move, drag to new location. You can drag your waypoint. Maybe we can park a some small house and we can park our cars and start on this area. As you can see, this link maps. When you when you buy Google Earth, you don't have access to this company. You need to you know you need to have an access a layer. Just Google and you'll figure out. Uh, because if you see Google Earth satellite image, the quality is not the best. That's why I always like to use a little bit extra information. And the next thing I'm going to draw it's a, a track along all along sorry i'm going to draw i was i'm sorry clear clear okay clear drawings okay the next step i'm going to draw a track to put on my gps right click line and you can call pontax track uh, you can save on the folder, Pontax River, you have the color you want. You can change for any color that track, and then even you can change the type of line and the opacity, I normally have solid. And I start doing a drawing along the river. You can click on your mouse on the wheel and you'll create like uh, a pen and you're going to draw everything along the river and then we can see rapids and we keep going keep going if you click i just want to show a little bit on the curve i like I like doing a lot of segments. For example, if you are in a curve and you want to make <clears throat> a, a very soft curve, instead of doing like this, you can click on Shift, and they change right away, and you can make like something like this. 
but I don't like because it creates a lot of points and and the GPS they come they don't like a lot of waypoints and points it takes time to read the GPS. I just make like big segments in general, just following a lot around the river. As you can see, the this software maps it's really it's really good. If you change for Google Maps satellite, the quality is not the same compared with these ones. Oops. And yeah, it's really, we almost you see the rocks in the river. <clears throat> and anytime you can change for another maps. And you're going all the way around to the river. I'm just going to change for these ones because I really like to work always with pictures. Now, we have a question from the audience. Yes. Uh, have you ever use Snap to hydro feature when dropping? Yes. On Tropo? I try, it doesn't work well because the call topo, the Snap, you can use these ones on the Snap, but the hydro, it doesn't show the rivers. If I want to show all the river is not showing the pond axe. They only show most of the creeks. The main okay. rivers is not showing. You can catch these ones, the snap, the yellow, they change right away the color. Unfortunately, the main course they don't have. For some reason, I don't know why. Okay. Um, I guess we should say that if you have a question, um, just wait till a point where Sandra was about taking some air in and just come on the audio and ask your question because that's really what this workshop's about yeah. is to get people to, you know, they maybe know some of it, but they have a question, how do you, or where yeah. do you go and stuff like that. So feel free to jump in yeah. and mute when you're not asking a question, of course. Yeah, anytime you can stop the track and then you go on the left side, you can, okay, done. And then you have a rapid as you can see, this image, they are really good. You can click marker. It really depends. I've, it's different by phase. Normally, I first, I create the first and the last waypoints, and then I draw the tracks, and then I go back. I put all the, the rapids waypoints, and then the last ones in general is the campsites. It really depends. A lot of people just stop the track before the rapid, and they keep going. It really depends, but I just want to show how some waypoints on the way. For example, rapid, rapids, waypoint folder, and um, I can increase the size, and then I can change the color, and I can change the logo, and this waypoint, it's safe, safe. And then I can keep again, new marker line, and keep going, keep going, and I keep going, or maybe I almost can see the route. <laughs> now, can you connect your lines together? I was waiting for that question. <laughs> and then I, on the left side, I close the line, and then yes, you select this one, right click, because you guys can see right away it's changing the thickness, line thickness. And by the way, when it changed the right, right click, And on the base, it says join. You can split, reverse. Reverse just change the, the, uh, the arrow. For example, you are saying asking to join, and I join this one. Join. Oops, join. And you have your waypoint join. If you come back here, the same, you can split. Okay, and you split the waypoint. And even if you click two times, you can edit. For example, you wanna edit this line and you click okay. And then and I just wanna change those kind of topo maps. Anytime you can change the maps and then this one, you want to join again, join, and then you join this one, and then, oops, sorry. Okay, 
install join sorry cancel join 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 oops oh boy okay so do you typically do the root first and then go back over it and choose campsites identify yes. Like yes yeah typically I, I go all the way around i'm going to show and then left side that goes my line I guess it's more efficient because the line really creates the distance. Then you could subdivide it into X days. Yeah. And say, okay, now I'm not too sure where I'm stopping, but now you work on the campsites or the rapids. Um, yeah, and I do the same thing where I just go systematically all the rapids and, and classify them if I can. And then all the campsites in the area that I think I'm camping and a few others, just in case I got to go to plan B. Sandro? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. One thing I do different is I just uh, basically pick the beginning and the end, and then I lay a line directly between them. Yeah. And then I just drag the line uh, point by point by grabbing those active points onto the river. Hmm. And that allows, uh, me, that allows me to use actually a minimum of points because i don't really care if it's not perfect uh i like i'm i like i like more or less i like for example this one because at the end it's going to say it's one or one kilometer or less one kilometer and you are tired you know when you have 15 and 16 kilometers a day or maybe at the end you have a five kilometers difference it could make could save some some time that's why I always like, this is the way I draw all the time. Yeah, well, it's a different way of doing it. Yeah, because at the end, it can make like two kilometers more paddling. If you make like at the beginning at the end, it's, it's different ways. It's but for example, if you click on shift and you start doing all these small curves, but it's creating a lot of points. Sandro? Yes. Uh, can you're currently using the Esri uh, base layer right now. Is that right? Yes, correct. And it was listed in the list under uh, a category of your layers. Uh, is that, um, why was that categorized that way? Is it because it's something you've got a particular connector to yes, get to? Yes, or? because it's uh, the call topo they don't supply with this one. You need to create a link, a separate link. You need to go for <clears throat> configuration Oh, do, do, sorry. Configuration. Do, 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 do. Sorry. You go into your account and then you go into your layers and there's this layer you need to create. It's a custom layer. Okay. You can go online. There's a lot of map suppliers and very interesting stuff as well. You can create like railway lines and you can add after and call topo. And how did you get access to that uh, particular base layer? Uh, I can send you the link after if you want. Just send oh, me an email. Just send me the link and I'll send you the link. Okay. <laughs> it's easier. That'd, that'd be great. Yeah. So wh while I've got you uh, here, just a second question. I'm, yeah. <clears throat> as someone who uh, uh, you know heavily believes in leave no trace, the one anxiety I always have is about uh, if I've got all the good sources for... Uh, campsites, existing campsites. Are any uh, are any of the layers in the rather long list there, uh, do any of them have sources of campsites or ones you particularly like for that kind of information? No, no. The okay. only way you can have the, there is some map showing the campsites. I'm going to show, for example, let me see the one. Uh, I'm going to change for auto maps. 
There is some map they show some campsites. Uh, let me see if this one. But in general, they don't show any campsites. On the other, I was let me see was the map was I saw one map and they are showing some campsites. I'm just trying to figure out which one and was marker. Oh, okay, maybe uh, maybe uh, Parker Lakes. Okay, this is this is in Halliburton Parker Lakes, as you can see. They are showing some campsites, but in general, Cal Topo never show campsites, never show portage. That's why I always say, you always need <coughs> Jeps map or Algonquin maps as a by, or by the books like me, uh, if you're going to any place. That's why I always say, if you, if you do a lot of canoe trips in South Ontario, maybe Cal Topo is not the best for you, because you know all the maps, it's everything is there. You don't need. To, you just need Google. It will be enough for you. Uh, uh, a lot of times you can get like files with all the GPS coordinates of the map. Sorry about the campsites, and then just import it into CalTopo. Yes, we did if that. You have with the yeah, Woodland yep. has a website that has all the campsites, and as Yuri says. Uh, one of the files is just campsites and you just download them and yeah. Yeah. massage them to get rid of the ones you don't want and then download yeah. what you do want. Yeah, exactly. But as I said, called Topo, it doesn't give you. You always need to yeah. find yeah. somewhere, right? Yeah. I look at Cal Topo more just as a way to get good topo maps to start with. E, I agree. It yeah. More if you're going for a remote place. Yeah. Another base layer that I use is NR Canada. It's the actual topo maps of Canada. Yes. It's not immediately obvious that it's available on CalTopo, but there is a back way into it, um, which yes. I got them to show me. And that yeah. shows all the rapids and everything. Yeah. yeah, I have the same in Google Earth as well. I have these ones in Google Earth. You have that ones I have, but Google Earth takes a lot of time to reload. <clears throat> so how have you worked at the campsites for the Pontacs? Uh Yeah, you just, yeah, uh, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do. There's a river, a lot of people they don't do, and you just need to check, uh, talk with people. There's nothing you can do. You have okay. to get a script for Yeah, because there's not many campsites on the Pontacs. Exactly. Unfortunately, yeah, there's nothing you can do. It's it is what it is. You know, it's remote river. Yeah, <clears throat> it's also really scrubby. And then you keep going. So you guys have talked about getting in touch with Cal Topo. You can phone Cal Topo and get no, help. Then no, it, there's a, a foreign website. It's just if you have any questions, <coughs> you drop a question, like a foreign uh, after they are pretty fast. One or two hours, you have a uh, feedback from them. Yeah, I I've, I've done that with them, and they're very good. And, and it's not just a one-time response. They'll have virtually an email exchange with you over a couple of days. To solve yeah. your problem. Yeah, and then we can go and you know and keep all the wraps and do all the lines, everything <clears throat> until. Let me see. I just want to go through all the the river because I will stay here for two hours. <laughs> but the the real world, you did follow all the track. And then you are in James Bay, and then you're going south. Remember, Cal Top with a planner. Not really. Of course, you're going to use all the information on your GPS. I'm going to show, and then you are in the city, and you finish your trip. <clears throat> it means you have the starting point, and you have the end point. You create a marker or a waypoint, and then end. 
and you create on the folder. It means you have a track for your GPS, you have already two waypoints, uh, and then <coughs> you can start working on the rest. I'm going to show the other one because I don't want to be all night. Okay, this is after I was working for two hours. Uh, and I started dropping all the, the waypoints. I start this one, the rapids. This is really cool. There's a, you can, you can, they have really a canoe. You can go here. And then there's one icon for a canoe. And you can change the color or blue. You can increase this, the folder and you can increase the size. And you know, when you get here, <clears throat> of course, all these icons on the GPS, they don't look like a canoe. It's like a normal waypoint. But for people it's planning, I really like. <clears throat> it looks more nicer. And I start dropping all the waypoints. And the first ones, the next ones, I start dropping all the creeks as well. First, it's I draw the first and the last waypoint. Then I'm going to the rapids. Then I'm going for creeks, water creeks, rivers, small creeks. And then I'm going for <coughs> campsites as well. And then I can change for a different maps called Topo. And I drop. The waypoint say there's a, a creek on the left. When I'm paddling, when I see this creek, I know more or less where I am. I know. And then I start run all the waypoints. <laughs> and I know, as you see, the track line will be always in the middle. And then this is I start booking the campsites. I'll get there to the campsites uh, because, uh, yeah. Someone was asked, how you know the campsites? I'll get there. And well, I see you've divided your track up into different days. Exactly. Okay. okay. So that first track, that first day, you get distance and stuff like that, right? Yeah. The first thing, after I finish the full track, I have the full track from the beginning to the end. On the, on the full track, I can see. I'm creating a profile and I have the full that's, that's track. Handy. Yeah, yeah, that's handy. <clears throat> Let me change the menu. So that tells you where the drops are and and the little yeah. above is because you crossed a little, you, you weren't accurate with your route. It was like probably not on the water, but across land or something. Yeah, yeah I just want to change. The good thing about this is that you can figure out your daily distances yeah. Exactly. That's why I wasn't a go. Yeah, I really like because it's the distance, it's the planning, everything. Yeah. He draws, he makes it. Okay. Well, plus looking at it, you could see. Okay, that's a lot of travel, you know, river travel, or lots of rapids. You know, that yeah. will close down maybe scouting. Okay. Or yeah. speed you I up, you just run everything. Yeah, I, I, I changed the uh, from feet, well, from miles to kilometers because I work more in metric and I know I have the full graphic and I can see from the beginning to the end, we have the track. I don't know if you guys can see on the screen. Yeah. But I'll try to show a little bit. As you can see on the starting point, you can, there's a small round, it's moving a little bit. And I can see all this track at the end, we have a trip almost 144 kilometers. It means, okay, this will be more or less five days, maybe more. And I know the last kilometers, they are really flat. It means this will take a lot of time. And on the first days, there's a lot of drop. It means we can push more on the first days and then on the last days, because it's very long surface, very long flat surface, maybe it's on the James Bay, 
and it could be a very long day paddling and maybe we can push a little bit more on the first days and then we have more time for James Bay. Um, they have a really cool thing as well. You can create these spheres or these lines, circle lines and create size. It means this is a five kilometers radius. And there is at least I know this small village it's five kilometers. This is really, I really like this, just to have an idea of distance in general. It doesn't matter on there, but when I'm planning, I really like to see more or less the distance. At least I know, okay, when we did the curve, we still need about 5K. Okay, the next step, because I know the last 12 kilometers or 50 kilometers, they are really long day. Uh, I'm going to split the days. In general, I normally I paddle in reverse with a really good slope around 25. If it's okay, we can go for 35. It's really depends the group and how many rapids we have uh, because the rapids takes a lot of time to scout. And sometimes you need portage. And when you have like eight people, Sometimes a rapid can take one hour to move all the bags, carry everything, and that counts a lot. Uh, if you are with uh, two boats, you can run maybe 35 kilometers a day, but when you have a big group, you may count for 25 kilometers a day. And that's why I start dividing my tracks. It means where I'm, I'm just going to save a backup this one. Just give me a We've moment. We've got a question from the audience. Uh, can yeah. We ask, will it give you info regarding tides? The, no, it's not the best. If it was in the US, yes, not in Canada. You just need to talk with the people there. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, there's probably something online yeah. yeah, there's something I like, but you know, it's Minister in Environment. Yeah, it's Minister of Environment. Usually there's yeah. a calendar and a time, and they'll tell you. The yeah, period. there's the tides calendar. Um, yeah, I know there's the tides calendar. Department of Oceans and stuff, I'm sure. Yeah, you can get right. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like the dams have water levels and stuff. They'll, they'll have tide tables there, because I do remember yeah. going to James Bay before. And we did look at the tide tables, you know, going in yeah. the river, because we yeah. don't want to go up a river when it tides coming up, because that's the river plus the tide. And hopefully, if you can get it the opposite way, you can go back up the river with the tide. It's also really shallow at the mouth of the okay. pond. Tide. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's why I really like to see as well. Uh, all these maps, because they have a lot of information as well. If you go to James Bay, and if you change for Google Earth. Does it show buildings at all? Because there's a hunt camp at the mouth, and then there's- Yeah, I show you can see Google Earth, you can see all the village, everything. There's there's a couple of buildings on the Pontax though. Yeah, you, you go, maybe show. If you you go should be able to see Canada. It. If you go to the NR Canada base maps, it shows that all that stuff. Like there's a hunt camp somewhere at the mouth, and then there's one up river right. Up, you know, up the up probably a day. Yeah, it wouldn't be up the rapids though. Um, the hunt camp because they would access yeah. by regular. Yeah, time, yeah. Uh, generally, I mean, there are boats that go up the rapids, but depending how big the rapids are. Yeah. Go on the uh, Hurricana. We went up the rapids like 10k with a one of those, uh, you know, long. How, how, how did how did you call up this uh, vertical profile? Uh, you just well, you just select the track. Yeah. <laughs> or and you right have right. on the left side on the left side. Sorry, you have Pontax route. Sorry. Yeah. On this one, and then this is the graphic. You see this like this graphic. And let me just click, sorry. And you click and you have access to the graphic. Oh, okay. Yeah, so and this, Sandro, when you scroll yeah. your mouse around the, the end of the river, you could see the little blue dot moving around. 
that's handy. Yeah, that's really handy. Because now you've got a distance with a position on your map yeah. when you bring up your profile. Like right now, if you scroll yeah, around, you you can you'll see, see your blue dot. dot. Yeah, moving. At least I have right away an idea. Yeah, where the flat the, starts. When the flat starts, it means, yeah. okay, we wow. have all this area, it's flat. It means we have from 116 kilometers to 144, more or less, you know, everything is flat. It means James Bay will be a really long, long day right away. <clears throat> Let me just close, okay. Okay, the next step, I start dividing this long, big track in small sections. Um, and I start, I throw right away my campsite because I don't know the campsites. I don't have location for the precise campsites. My placeholders on the Pontax, well, sorry, my campsites will be like a placeholders. I don't know the correct location. I just need after to talk with someone who did the Pontax or maybe have the tracks from the last time they went and they can send me the information. But as a reference, I'm splitting the campsites more or less in 25, 30 kilometers. And I split. And this will be my first day. And then if I'm going again, sorry. And I know right away on the first day, I'm doing more or less 25 kilometers. And I sp start split my track all the way down. Uh, let me show again. Let me go to another campsite. And I split again. Split. <clears throat> and I'm going on the left side and I have again all the graphics and I split all the way until I get to the last day. I'm just going to delete these ones and show these ones. So just to distract you a bit, there was a question yeah. from the audience about uh, the forest fire data. Only in US, most of the time. Okay, because I know we had some data when we did Woodland Caribou uh, that showed, you know, the, um, it had a, like an icon and then it would talk yeah. about the, the border and yeah. uh, when was the last fire and stuff like that. Uh, well, for for Nunavik, which I guess we're looking at now, uh, Hydro Quebec keeps that uh, info. Okay. Yeah. Well, the problem with Scaltop, they work a lot with the rescue teams, and in US they call the SAR. SAR sorry, it's it's the same as well in Canada, but they have really a partnership with the search and rescue in US, and they provide all the information. They work very well in US. Yeah, I seem to remember we had a website we went to when before we did Woodland Caribou, and it went back, I don't know, 10, 20 years. You click on the icon, it would give you the border, tell you when the fire happened, how long it was, how many hectares, yeah, like that. So you could take that information. It's important sometimes, like when you're going through like a rapid and a portage, if yeah. there's a fire, it's awfully, you know, black and messy. Yeah. Okay, then we can go for different maps. Sometimes show us up different stuff. Let me. I start running all the maps if anything like different in general. Um, There's not. I had a question. Uh, maybe Scott, you can feel the question by just unmuting while Sandro is clicking away here. Yeah, what's the question? We'll see if Scott yeah, comes it's, in. There you go. Sorry, I just realized that the map is highly interactive. And I was, Very. Just wondering, I was wondering if it had any information from ministries who have tagged 
predators to map out their their movements and stuff through certain areas so like for example if you were camping along a river um maybe there was information to know whether there's like a wolf pack nearby or something like that yeah yeah that's a good question but <clears throat> Uh, I don't have that information. I know a lot of business. I know some people they work with caught up, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I have no idea. I know in US it's pretty big. In US it's sorry in Canada. Well, it's, it's a all, question for Caltopo, maybe. Yeah, it's maybe it's a question for Caltopo. Maybe you just go Caltopo. to their blog and say, "Is there?" <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then you can overlay maps. For example, you can select one map. <laughs> and then you can add another layer, another map on below as well. For example, you can add a topographic maps. Yeah, my internet's a little bit low, but I'm gonna show. And you can change the colors, overlay maps. Um, so I'm thinking we have maybe 10 minutes to go. That's really maybe interesting. What you could do cool. is show how you save the export map, map. And how you export. Exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to show. Can you guys see my screen or my face? Let me see if I Yes, can we can see your face my... in my okay. view. Uh, can you see my GPS? Uh, no. Okay, yeah, let me see. Or lower your camera. Okay, let me see. Yeah, your camera's on the high on side. The screen. You have a lovely ceiling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see where I am. I just want to see where I am. Okay, this is the Garmin. I'm going to export all the maps based on the Garmin. GPS map 66. It's one of the last models. Uh, I really like this one. Uh, for Caltop, you can use the 62, 66, uh, 68 64. as well. 64, they're always the same base. They are really good maps. They are really good GPS. For canoe trips, they do the same. Uh, no need to upgrade your units. I really like, you know, always have the last one in general. After three or four is I like to update the big difference from the GPS map 66. Uh, it's the really it's much faster than the older ones. I like the keyboard as well. It's very fast work compared with the 62 or the 64. Uh, they have the version in in reach. This one is not in reach. Uh, the only problem I can see the in reach. This one, it's a battery. You can buy two batteries and just or recharge batteries. The problem with the Enrich, it's integrated battery and there's no way to replace batteries. You need to recharge with solar panels in a field. That's the only problem I can see with the 66 map, a GPS Garmin 66 with Enrich integrated. I really, I don't like that option to be, to have an integrated battery inside and it's not possible to replace batteries. That's why I went for this one, and plus it was much cheaper, this one. Uh, as I said, I don't like phones. Uh, I like to break the phone from my trips, disconnect from the real world. And that's why I'm going to show how to export a map and see on your Garmin. I already plugged the Garmin on my computer. Uh, let me see on this one. I just want to see. Uh, as you guys can see, it's going to show a folder. Uh, and you have uh, two important folders. You have the GPX, where you save your tracks. And then you have another one for the custom maps. You're going to export from call to put two options. Well, two, two things. You're going to export the custom map. And you're going to export your tracks and waypoints in a separate way. Uh, 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 and first thing I'm going to turn off, I'm just going to show, turn off this one. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. The first thing I'm going to delete this one, this one. 
because this takes some time to uh, to export maps and layers. <clears throat> the first thing you need to know when you export a map, you want to make sure you clean your track on information because if you export a map, it's going to show all your tracks, all the symbols. I really, I don't like it. I just to sh prefer to show a very clean line. I normally, I turn off the map and then I export, you're going to export and then kill M. <clears throat> I have Yuri on the call. Okay. So you're just exporting the map right now. Just exporting the map. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. I did a mistake. Sorry. It was not this one. I'm going to print a Garmin. If you're going to print Garmin custom map. Okay. Just be careful. This is really tricky. I don't want to go very deep because I can stay here all night talking about tiles and map size and DPIs and image size. It'll be very tricky all night. I, I found Caltop when they are doing custom maps, they prefer doing small sections. When you are doing a full river, it's a little bit tricky. You just need to go really small and you just need to be very careful on this area to keep always below or around 100. And as you can see, I'm selecting already 280 images. I know there is one person in our group, we have an inReach, and unfortunately inReach only works with inReach maps or inReach maps or the Lorma maps, and you are not allowed to export maps to inReach. It's a sad, I don't know why. <laughs> I think on the new ones, you already, there's that cap they are it's capable to export both versions, but on the older versions, you are it's impossible to export custom maps. And I'm going to start reducing a little bit the area. And you can change the scale as well, but you you start losing the quality, or you start increasing the quality. It's really you guys have to need to figure out a little bit. Okay, and then you have your map. And then you download, you select, you have already 105, and then you click download KMZ. And you start download your KMZ file. And you start download on the bottom. And this must be our folder download files. It takes some time to download all the information. And then I guess the next step is you take your your track and your markers yes. and your rapids and all that stuff. Then you yeah. take that as a file. So now you're superimposing them on your GPS. Yeah. The next one, I have my track is already printing this one, but I can go to my GPS. The first thing I'm going to export. And I export for GPX. I export everything. I just want to move this window to the bottom. And I export. I copy the folder and then I'm going to my GPS, Garmin, and I'm GPX and I drop the waypoints there. It means that all the waypoints in the track, everything's already on the GPS, it's missing the custom map. It's moving. And then I have the custom map. I'm going to rename, Pontax map. And then I'm going to copy to my Garmin. Garmin, and then there's a folder custom maps and I drop there. Okay, let's see, now I'm going, let's see if I can see my face. Uh, 
now I'm going to unplug. I'm going to turn my GPS. Now I'm going to select the custom map. Menu, map setup, configure maps. And then there is one, it says custom maps. I click on the custom maps. And there is, I presume, I can see, but there is contacts map already showing, correct? Yeah. OK. Then I'm going custom map. And it's already there. And then, as you guys can see, let me show you. OK, we have the custom maps. I don't know if you guys can see from from Caltopo. Can you guys see? Yep. It's OK, now fuzzy, but we can see. OK, let me see. I can show better. Unfortunately, there is really small window, but this yeah, is yeah that that we can see very well. Okay, now it's missing the track and the waypoints. Then I'm going to page main menu. Then I'm going to save tracks, and then I have all the tracks. I divide the tracks by days. Day one, day two, day three, and I'm going for the, for example, day two, and say right away on day two, I have a 24 kilometers I'm going to paddle, and you see right away all the waypoints, it's already there. Another aspect of the uh, Caltopo is the creation of like a, a tablet of maps. Uh, yeah. Printed, and it, and that, it kind of, you know, yeah. puts it in a book form. Yeah, another cool thing they have, you can print the maps. They work with a, with a map supplier as well in U, in US. I never try, but you can work as well. They, they print everything for you if you want. They divide, divide by maps. Or you can print as a PDF as well. Yeah, that's what I meant. Now, I believe Yuri and various people, they come up with like a booklet. So you create an overlap of yeah. pages where you, you know, that hunter, that magic hunter that you were talking about, you have yeah. one massive map of 300, you know, yeah. things. And can you guys, can yeah. you see my screen? Yeah. And then we have yeah. all the information. And it's a really cool tool. Yep, I think. Well, how much time we have? Well, we're about the end. We could do some Q&A if people from the audience have specific questions. I'm sorry. I, I presume for people who have already experienced in Caltop, maybe this is a little bit boring. But my main purpose was just to share another tool. Uh, more, well, another tool as well. For, well, it's different from Google Alert as well. It's different from Garmin Basecamp. It's a little bit more powerful than Google Alert, but at the end, I really like Google Alert. I do a lot of stuff on Google Alert. First, it's free. I have access to a lot of information as well. Uh, it really depends person by person, right? Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, one of the things we were playing with and just starting to talk about is giving a little lecture just on like Garmin GPSs because they're all very similar. Um, the only challenge I think we have is we know how to talk about it. The challenge is sharing the Garmin screen simultaneously giving a Zoom presentation. Um, I know when you're using a phone you can project your phone onto, you know, a television or something. Yeah. I don't know how to do it to project what's on a Garmin screen to, you know, a presentation. We yeah. Figure that out yet. Um, we could either do it with a separate camera, I guess, or yeah. somehow, you know, you emulate it. You like you project it somehow. I don't yeah, know if there's a software inside that we can do that. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions. I'm open for questions. You guys can unmute as well. If you want to share your cameras as well, I, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I yeah, just, Pedro? Um, 
it's not a question that I have, but okay. I do have a, a comment. And one of the things you can do within CalTOPO, somebody was asking about mileages. And what you can do is if you were to right click on the track you drew on the map, you can uh, click on the modify. If you go up a little bit there, Sandro, and click on modify. Okay, and then to the right, you can say where it says create points, click on that. And it, you can tell it to create a point every, however, 500 meters. every 500 meters. And it's going to generate. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what I do, well, I'm, I'm in the US, so I think in terms yeah. of miles, I create a waypoint every mile. Yeah. And then, I, then I have a, on my printed map that I print out, I can see, I do it, I refer yeah. to the track so, a good that tool. so that it starts at the end and goes to the beginning. So then yeah. I create a waypoint every mile starting at zero. And then I can see always how far I am from my end, from the end of my trip. Yeah, that's a good tool. And how did you do the reverse? You said you started at the end and... Yeah, well, Sandro drew his his track from the beginning to oh, the end. Oh, I but see. But he showed that yeah. reverse... You can reverse was, it. You can yeah. reverse it. So yeah, you can reverse it and end. do the same thing. Okay, got it. Yeah, you reverse it and go from the end yeah. to the beginning and then yeah. create a waypoint every kilometer. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, because I can see sometimes you read a book and then counting down to the end. Sometimes yeah. Yeah. going the other way. Um, yeah. Generally counting down. No, it's good because you start your day and you split by half kilometer and then you know more or less how many kilometers it's missing, how many, for example, if you have a campsite or a creek, you know, okay, from the creek up north, it's two kilometers to have a beach or a sandy area or an island. It means yeah. you are counting one, two, three, you have an island. Well, from the island to the river on the left, you know, it's more or less two kilometers or one kilometer. That's a good, good one. Well, that's the beauty of these workshops is everybody's got a piece of the puzzle and yeah. it's, yeah. They're, they're educational. And I appreciate it. a little bit social. <laughs> exactly. Um, Sandro and, talked about printing out, printing out the PDFs. They're really yeah. more than just PDFs. They're geospatial PDFs. Mm -hmm. So you can print it out and save it and then import that into like a app on your phone, like a Venza maps or a Gaia yeah. GPS. Yeah. And, I know, uh, I know Sandra said he doesn't yeah, like I, various phones. I don't like phones. Line, but, <laughs> but, but for people who don't have a GPS, but they do have a phone, you can yeah, download yeah. a free app called Avenza and yeah. then just import that, uh, import yeah. that geospatial PDF that you created. And right. You, and you, can, work, you can work yeah. offline, basically. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. yes. It's kind of like doing the screen capture on Google Maps. Same thing. You've got a zone it's captured in your phone. Yeah. You could have no GPS, but knows where you are and it yeah. gives you a dot on the map. Local. Yeah, the nice thing about like the Avenza maps is it, you know, it, it does have, you do, your phone does have a GPS, so it'll yes. show you on the map where you're yeah. at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I really like, I know phones are a really good tool, but I just like to turn off. <laughs> yeah. Understandable. But yeah, not everybody and, not everybody and, has a GPS. Exactly. <laughs> right. And phones are not as robust as a GPS as far as weather. Yeah. Definitely. So you have to be yeah. careful. And they suck yes. batteries. What what Garmin do you use? You said again, what model? I use the Garmin GPS map sixty six. No in reach, without in reach. Without. But you used to have a 62, right? Or 64? Yeah, I have the, yeah, I have the 62. And there was, yeah. this one was, it's much faster. All the menus are, everything is the same. You just feel it much faster. And the screen is a little bit bigger. Uh, we have Wi Fi connection as well. For me, it doesn't matter. I just like because it's the keyboard. When you are work paddling with gloves, the other one was a little bit hard to touch. In this one, it's much faster. And the screen is a little bit, the screen compared with the 62, it's much brighter. I really like much this brighter. one. Yeah, much, okay. much more. Yeah, and I would say only, slower too. The only problem, I don't know. Slow. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why the, the this one, the same model with inReach, it's with the integrated battery. 
you need a solar panel all the time. Well, if you have a power bank, right? Yeah, you need a yeah, you need some you need a power bank one, to like, recharge every couple of days or whatever. This one you just replace the batteries, but if you have an in reach, yeah, you need to recharge the battery almost every day because you are. But if you GPS. brought if people brought like these power banks the size of your wallet and they got, I don't know, ten thousand, you know, milli. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they, but, if you plug them in, you got a big battery there. Yeah, but it's one last more a while. thing. It's one more thing, yes. Yeah. Versus Luckily, just flipping batteries. We only have people within reach in our group. <laughs> Sandro. Thank yes. you. Sandro, have you used the CalTopo app for the phone? I don't use CalTopo apps on my phone. I normally, if I'm going to make a trail, I use the All Trails app. It's really good. Yeah, I've, I've used the... Um... I've used the app on my phone and it is kind of handy, you know, when you're out on a trip, you can pull up the, all the work you did online, you know, yeah. from your kitchen kind of thing. And you can yeah. pull it all up and you can zoom in. It's it's a bit, it's got some weird features to it and I haven't really exploited it yet, but. Yeah, it, for sure you have more information. You have the app on your phone. It's like you have your computer almost. You have some extra information you can play it's just, I just don't like to use phones on, <laughs> on my trips. I, I spend mean, all day on the phone. Yeah, one of the advantages I saw when Yuri makes his maps, he does his palettes of PDF. Yeah. Then what he does is he's got his core PDF. He now inserts whoever's map that he's looking at, Hap Wilson or, you know, whatever. He'll insert um, screen captures of, say, the rapids you know, how to run the rapid, you know, high water, low water, that I find very helpful where you're yeah. creating a book map because generally you have this map on your deck of your canoe and you're looking at today's, you know, at dinner yeah. and you can see yeah. what's coming. Um, that's, that's really handy versus Sandra, yeah. the GPS. Sandra does and, the same thing. He, Sandra does the same thing, but he has a much better program than I use Microsoft Word. Yeah. This is something called Blue something, Sandra? Yeah, Blue Bean. I use Blue Bean. Yeah, yeah, let me see. It's awesome. Yeah. But that's not cheap software, is it? Uh, I don't know. It's I have for free, right? In my office. Uh, let me see what's this one. No, this one. Let me see if I have one with the maps. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, this is we normally I try to do. So you've got your core map, and then I can see Hap Wilson's, you know, river yeah. river maps. Um, and when we get to the rapid, here. yeah, we have the the map how to run the the rapid. Yeah. That, those and, maps are from Carts Planaire, right? Yeah, Carts Planaire. Yeah. Yeah, and then the red is the Hab Wilson inserts. Yeah. No, uh, that's awesome. If you yeah, mm -hmm. if you're going to Carts Planaire, I really like these guys. And you click on Find, you just write Find Noir, and you see right away Noir Northwest or Bonaventure. They have all these maps. 